Acoustical output power is a crucial parameter of loudspeaker performance. Loudspeakers must produce enough power for the program material being presented at a level that is louder than the crowd while maintaining the quality of the input source. Here's how we verify the acoustical output power of an individual loudspeaker. A test signal with defined parameters is needed. Pink noise is a mathematical algorithm that has equal energy per octave averaged over time. This is what it looks like on a third octave spectrum analyzer. The measurement is equal magnitude or flat and can be used to test the acoustical output power of an individual loudspeaker measured with a microphone. The output divided by the input results in a transfer function, a comparison of the level difference between the two signals. These measurements can be used to compare performance to published specifications. Ideally, a loudspeaker is measured in free field, but wind and rain can make this problematic. Similar results can be achieved in an anechoic chamber, where Meyer Sound measures the maximum acoustical output power sustainable for at least two hours. These maximum values are presented as interactive data sets in MAP. To verify the MAP data, start by building a model in MAP that can be replicated in the field. Place a Leopard loudspeaker one meter from a measurement microphone on an enabled surface that represents the ground, which yields these SPL values. To replicate the MAP model, place a Leopard loudspeaker on the ground in an open area. Place a measurement microphone one meter away from the loudspeaker. The input source is measured here. The loudspeaker output is measured here. And this is the transfer function. When the input level is increased and the output level increases proportionally, the transfer function remains stable, indicating the ratio between these two signals remains constant and the loudspeaker is within its linear operating range. This trace is stored for reference. Increase the input until limiting is measured across at least two octaves. At the onset of limiting, the proportional input to output relationship changes, which is shown by a shift downward of the transfer function. These are the conditions under which the map data is recorded in our chamber. We have reached the maximum acoustical output power values and peak values. These measured values closely match those presented in MAP. This trace is stored for reference. The maximum output should be verified for at least five minutes to ensure the loudspeaker performance remains constant. Now that we've verified the MAP pink noise data, let's apply B noise, the other input signal used to generate MAP data. The bandwidth of B noise is similar to human speech, which makes it a good signal to evaluate speech-only reproduction. Compared to pink noise, the source looks different, as does the loudspeaker output. But the transfer function remains the same because the input-to-output relationship does not change. The transfer function is independent of the signal content. Again, the input is increased until limiting is reached across at least two octaves as observed in the transfer function shifting downward. With this loudspeaker, the maximum output level is higher with B noise than with pink noise, and the B noise SPL values closely match those from MAP. Other program material can produce even wider variation in the maximum output of a loudspeaker. In the following examples, you will hear the loudspeaker output captured by this microphone. And with a great uproar of pipes and kettle drums, they would display new inventions. First, they brought the magnet. A heavy gypsy with an untamed beard and sparrow hands who introduced him... The loudspeaker maintains high intelligibility despite the increased peak values. The peak to average ratios in music are different from pink noise and vary from moment to moment and from one song to another.
with this particular segment of music, the loudspeaker reproduces peak values that exceed either data set presented in MAP while maintaining highly linear output. As we've heard, the Leopard has enough headroom to properly process these signals without changing the sound quality. This verification process demonstrates the importance of field testing a loudspeaker's maximum acoustic output power using the expected program material. Different input signals produce different maximum peak SPL values. For this reason, it is misleading to publish peak SPL values beyond those produced by test signals with defined parameters. The pink noise and B noise measurements obtained in our anechoic chamber and presented as interactive data sets in MAP are repeatable and verifiable. These values guarantee our loudspeakers will deliver the acoustical output power to meet performance requirements. Loudspeakers you can rely on, specifications you can trust. Meyer Sound.